struggling with an AC compressor that decided it just doesn't feel like working today? Well, me too. Fortunately, there are a few things you can check yourself and maybe even get it back online without having to call for an emergency repair. Speaking of emergency repairs, they are expensive, but did you know that some homeowners policies offer coverage for equipment breakdown, including HVAC systems? This and many more coverages are available, but many people do not take advantage of them because they simply didn't know it was an option. That's why today's sponsor, Ford Insurance, would like to invite you to review your current coverage with an expert to see if you're missing out on important protections for your home. Start a conversation today by visiting FordInsurance.com. Okay, so back to the problem. This is the compressor at my office. It's only a few years old, and we noticed that on hot days, the AC was simply shutting down. The first thing I checked was the air filter, which it was not overly dirty, so that wasn't the issue. We also had the coolant checked at the beginning of the season and the charge was good and given the AC had been blowing cold air without issue before and after these shutdowns occurred, then that likely wasn't the problem either. The first real issue we ran into is one that hopefully you shouldn't have and that was that the circuit breaker was tripping. Now, this was an easy fix. The breaker feeding the compressor was actually a 30 amp breaker and the problem was immediately obvious. The minimum amp rating on the compressor is 34 amps and the max breaker size on that sticker is 60 amps. Honestly, I'm surprised the thing ran at all with a 30 amp breaker, but when it really had to work hard and it was pushing well beyond that, and it was tripping. So I replaced it with a 50 amp breaker, which wasn't a problem here since the existing wiring was six gauge and it can handle that load. If we had something like 10 gauge in there, then we would have had to rerun that wire prior to upgrading the breaker. At this point, I thought the problem was solved, but the next issue we ran into was that on really hot days, the AC would work fine in the morning, but then shut off midday when it was at its hottest. The new breaker wasn't tripping and I confirmed the unit had power, so yeah, something else was going on. The weird thing was that coming back in the morning the next day, the AC was magically working again. This made me suspect that maybe there was some overheating issues at play. The unit is very slightly undersized for the building, which means on hot days, it does have to work pretty hard. So I decided to try hosing it down and see if perhaps cooling it off with some water would help. And sure enough, that did the trick. Five minutes in some cold water allowed the AC to fire back up and run without issue, even in the blistering heat. Okay, overheating, that's the problem. Now, the proper way to address this is to completely replace the compressor with a larger unit, but that takes a lot of money and time and creates waste since there technically isn't anything wrong with the hardware we have. So I opted for another approach, and that was to provide additional cooling on the compressor itself. It'll still work hard and it will probably have a shorter lifespan because of that, but at least we'll get some life out of our investment and when it does come time to replace it, we'll do so with a larger unit. So how do we cool this thing? I mean, I'm not gonna sit out there all afternoon with a hose. Luckily, there are a lot of cheap kits you can buy online that make perfect DIY cooling systems. The one I decided to use is a misting kit and it costs like 26 bucks. It's normally used on things like outdoor patios, but there's no reason I can't point these misters at the compressor and use that nice cold water to cool the radiators and fan motor. The install is super quick and easy. Just zip tie the misting heads to the compressor. I also put one head inside the unit to mist the motor. And on hot days, I just go outside and turn the water on. If you want to get fancy, you can certainly automate this process with smart water valves and set them to open when the AC turns on, but I hadn't done that yet. There's also a side benefit here. By cooling the radiator with water, you may actually increase the overall efficiency of the entire system because it will be able to dissipate more heat with less energy. I'm gonna build a similar system for my home and I'll run before and after tests to see what kind of improvement there actually is. So that's it, it's a bit of a hack, but it keeps the AC running and it helped avoid a costly emergency repair bill. And you know, well that does it for today. I do wanna to thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, well, you know what to do.